My name is Paul Zerbeck, and I'm a professor of meteorology here at the College of DuPage. I've been here for 30 years, which is way longer than all of you have probably been alive, uh, except maybe your parents. One of the things I want to show you today is what we do with our website. So we deal with the weather. And so much about weather is about data. So I wanted to give you an indication of what life is like in the field of meteorology. First thing that's really important to know is that meteorology is a science. It's a hard science, it's like physics, it's applied physics. So we have a lot of math and a lot of information and we do a lot of data analysis. But we also look like we're investigators, like detectives. We try to look at the world around us and try to figure out what's going on so we can predict the future. So. Not only do we get to look at what is, we have to try to figure out what the future is going to be. Well, some of the ways that we look at the future is through what we call numerical models. We try to understand and predict what it's going to be. And there's all sorts of models that try to tell us the future. The problem is some of them are more correct than others. So I'm going to give you a little tour of what we do. I'm going to show you some of the models, some of the ways that we predict the future, but we're also gonna take a look at how we look at what's happening right now. Before I start with that and share my screen, I do wanna say one more thing. Another big part of meteorology is about visualization. So maybe you're interested in science, but physics or mathematics is not your strongest suit. Well, there's a lot of opportunity if you're into computers, if you're into design, maybe you wanna help people. We do a lot of work with emergency management to pe so people can prepare for disasters like flooding, tornadoes, and hurricanes. So there's a lot of branches of meteorology that I think you'd be interested in. So I'm gonna share my screen now. I'm going to introduce you to our weather page. This is, we call ourselves the Next Generation Weather Lab or Next Lab. So there's our little logo at the Collins of DuPage. So if you were to come here, we have something that's available just for anybody to come and kind of get a look at what we do at the College of DuPage in terms of meteorology. Right now, I'm making this film, this video on 38 degrees is the temperature and the dew point. So we have a little weather station at our college and here's a radar view and here's some pictures of students and here's the classes. And if anyone's interested in what classes we offer, this is a good place to kind of start looking at that. But what I want to go over here is where it says weather analysis tools. And I'm going to start with the most popular tool that we use at our site, and that is our satellite page. So we're actually known worldwide for this information that we present to you. Currently, we have two big satellites orbiting the Earth. And those satellites are looking down and getting pictures. Well, those images are sent to a national center and then they process and distribute the data all over. We then take that data and cut it into pictures that we wanna see. So what you're looking at now is what we call a visible satellite picture. This is basically just seeing where it's bright, it's reflecting light and it's cloudy. Over here it's cloudy. Where it's dark, well, water doesn't do a good job reflecting so all the bodies of water are fairly dark. And where it's sort of in between, well, this is all landforms. So <clears throat> we can do some fun things here. I can, I can loop this image so you get an, an example of what's been going on and see how things are moving. And over here, there's a whole bunch of other ways of looking at the, at the cloud cover. So one of them might be, this one is kind of cool. This is showing you how hot or how warm something is. In this case, the white colors are cold and the dark colors are warm. So we've got something warm up here. There's probably some clouds in the atmosphere, even though there's snow on the ground. We could also go, let's make it exciting and make it colorful. So we get to look at some stuff that's going on in the Northwest of the United States and the Central United States. But I wanna show you a really cool one. It's called True Color. So this is what the Earth would look like at least very close to what it looks like if you were in outer space looking down at the Earth. And what I really like about that is I can go to a different sector and I can look at the entire hemisphere. 
So right now, we're, what date is this? March 5th. And we're looking at what is going on in the entire world. We, we get these big bands of clouds across the central equator near the Amazon rainforest. We've got lots of clouds in the Atlantic Ocean, but a lot of clear skies. It's probably a nice day down in here in the Caribbean. And I can do this and I'll show you something that's really fun. I can give some new colors and then I don't have to worry about it becoming day and night. You can see the darkness of night. So this requires the sunlight, but let me show you this one. I think this is kind of a fun uh, version of that, as is this one. But this one, it's going to be kind of weird. So let's just take a look at it. This is a way of looking at lots of different information. So this is one of the things we do in meteorology is we say, how do we visualize the data? And then what does that data mean? Do I understand the atmosphere? So maybe green would be lots of moisture in the air and orange is very cold air. It's actually got ozone in it. So it's coming from high up in the atmosphere. And I think this is kind of cool. I, in fact, let's go ahead and just watch the world spin over the course of a couple of, couple of days here. And oh, that's too slow, right? Let's speed it up so we can really see the entire hemisphere in, in motion. So lots of people use this site and they can use it for all different types of products. But what I really like is when I go local and I'm gonna go over here cause I wanna show you something really fun and I'm gonna go visible. I'm not gonna go that far back. So let's just go to 12 images and watch this. Remember we said whites are clouds? Well, here's all the clouds that are kind of moving over here, right? But look at all this in Wisconsin and Northern Illinois. It's not moving. Why is it bright? Well, we're still in the end of winter. We're getting warmer. A lot of the snow around Chicago area is melted, but out here, there's still a lot of snow on the ground. It was pretty thick. So we can actually see snow. And I think that's just really cool that we can zoom in so well that we see snow. We can also zoom in to see forest fires. In fact, let me zoom in someplace that I like to look at down here in the Baja of California. And I'm gonna to go to true color so you can see it. I think this is kind of cool. This is called the Gulf of California. This is the Baja Peninsula. So this is in Mexico and the Colorado River and famous, famous uh, phenomenon, phenomena in the Colorado River include the Hoover Dam and the Grand Canyon. And that river goes through and then it dumps out here. And if you look, the water is not totally blue because there's so much sediments coming up. So not only are we looking at what's going on in the air, we're actually looking at what's going on in the water. So pretty interesting, some fog down here, some cool pictures of the desert. I love to sit here and look around at these things. Here's up in Canada, maybe we can see some of the snow and their lakes are covered in ice, so they're still snow covered. Just amazing things. And people from all over the world come and play and, and they do data and they do forecasting based on this. So that tells me a little bit about what is happening. But what if I want to know what's going to happen? Well, I'm going to go back to weather data and I'm going to go to where it says models. Okay, so in the models, here's an example. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use a new experimental page that we're playing with. These are all the models that we use to forecast. So we have some short range models. These models tell me something about what's gonna happen over the next maybe 18 hours. So here's to see on this day, March 5th, is it gonna rain anytime? Looks like it's gonna be a clear day. Oh, maybe a shower or two later on. So that's what we see today. And I can look at the temperature. So here's temperatures. It was cold last night, we got down in the 20s, but by today, temperatures are supposed to be, you can read them here, 47, 46 degrees. So that's kind of a nice early March day. But what if I wanna know what's gonna be like this weekend? Well, then I use another model. I use the same information and I can go out to three and a half days. And I start looking at the temperatures over that time and I'm like, ooh, here's Monday up in the 50s maybe even 60s to the south of Chicago. 
Well, that's exciting. But what if I wanted to look beyond that? Well, then I use another model and I go way out into the future. And this goes out 16 days. And I've got temperatures in the 50s on Tuesday and temperatures in the 60s on Wednesday and temperatures in the 60s on, and upper 50s on Thursday. And then it gets colder. So it's not spring yet, but if it'll feel like spring around here in the next week. So that's how I predict the future. Now, what if I want to go out beyond 16 days? Well, then you're out of luck because going beyond about 10 days to two weeks is about as far as we can forecast with some accuracy. We can try. We can try to use data out that far. This goes out to, I think, two months, but it's not very reliable. And if you see the pink and white colors, there's cold air coming through at the end of March. So again, spring is not over yet, folks. I mean, spring is not here. Winter's not over. Winter will claw back. And as a meteorologist, I know that. So we use these models and there's a lot of things that we can do on this. So I'm just gonna show you what we do is we visualize data. Kind of cool stuff here, right? Here's the wind speeds. Our air pilots may care about where the winds are, know how fast you can fly to the west or fly to the east. You fly with the winds and you get faster speeds. You don't fly against them and you go somewhere else, you get faster speeds. We also have a lot of information just about things that are happening all over the, the, the world, all over the country, on different temperatures, different ways of analyzing the atmosphere. I'm gonna show you another one that I kind of like. This is what we call our hazards page. So this says, well, where is there dangerous weather anywhere in the United States? And we've kind of color coded them to say, well, purple is winter. So I go out to California and there's winter weather advisories. So probably getting some snow in the mountains. If I go to bl the blue, I'm gonna get marine statements. So this is for small crafts. So like you're boating, it's probably gonna be choppy waters. If I went to orange, I'm gonna go look at fire weather. So we have a fire weather watch, which means it's gonna be windy and dry. And if there's any grass fires that go on, well, that's gonna be a problem. The yellow is like for hurricanes, we're in the wrong time of year for hurricanes. So we have nothing to worry about there. The green is for water related. So along the rivers, the Ohio River, there's flood warnings. So lots of snow melted. There was a lot of rain the last week. So there's some flooding going on in the rivers. And that's what all this is. <laughs> and then there's other things, non-precipitation. So there's, it's not precipitating, but it is foggy and that's hard to see. So if there's weather that impacts people, we try to say, hey, take a look over here at what it is, and then you can read about it. So if I were to click, what's going down here in Florida? A rip currents. You ever gone swimming in the ocean? Got to be careful of those rip currents. So if I were to click on that, I could see where's that rip current? Oh, it's in coastal Beach County. And it says they can sweep even the best swimmers away from shore into deeper water. So we try to give people an impact statement on what's happening. Then just a little bit more, we can talk about climate. We can talk about longer time periods of what the temperatures are gonna be like. And the next six to 10 days, it's warm in the east, cold in the west. We can look at monthly outlooks. We can look at, here's something we do for sea surface temperatures. So if you're interested in maybe oceanography or marine biology, this might be something you'd wanna look at. We have the North Pacific saying, these are temperatures of the ocean compared to what's normal. And this gives us to what we call a La Nina. You may have heard of El Nino. Well, this is a La Nina. It means the waters are actually colder than normal. And that's the way it's been this winter. So lots of information worldwide that we can look at. And when you're in meteorology, we investigate this. So if you really like science and research, there's a lot of data for you to make sense out of. If you like computer science, we need people to program and make those images. And if you are working with emergency management or maybe even public safety or criminal justice, then you need people who are gonna know when there's gonna be a hazard and what to do in response to that hazard. 
And if you look over here, there's a lot of different hazards, fire and drought. So we can even look long-term for maybe people who are in, into environmental science. We've got the Southwest United States is building up a drought this year. And droughts come and go every couple of years, but it's, it's a pretty significant drought. It's been warm and dry this winter, but look at the East. The East is not in drought because it's been cold and wet out there. So with all this information, this is what we do. And the College of DuPage Meteorology is actually used by everyone all over the country. Universities, colleges, the United States military, Army, Navy, Air Force, even government organizations like NOAA, which is the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, use our website because we have a lot of data, nice, organized, and easy to use. So people from all over use this, and we get to do it here at College of DuPage. So if you're going to think about going to school or taking some classes, we've got a ton of classes. We even do tornado chasing. And tornado chasing is kind of a fun thing. So I'm going to end my little talk with you about talking about when we go tornado chasing. And here's some of the pictures about we analyze data in the mornings after we eat breakfast. And then we go out and see these unbelievably cool storms like this one over Colorado. And we stay out into the evening to take photographs of lightning. So a lot of fun. There's a big tornado and there's somebody really happy that we're seeing this tornado in the distance. And there's one that's not so distant anymore. That's a pretty big tornado. So we invite anybody who's 18 years old or older to storm chase with us. We've got people from all over Europe, from Australia, and from 18 to 80 years old. So when you're thinking about college, when you're thinking about a life in science, come to College of DuPage. It's a great place to start. And then you can use that information and go anywhere you want to go. So guys, I just want to say thanks for showing up today. Uh, I wish you the very best at the science fair and think about meteorology as more than just what you see on TV. We're scientists, we are using calculus and we're using physics to solve problems, to analyze data, to visualize data. It's a wonderful field and it will give you years and years of enjoyment. Thanks for showing up, bye-bye.